afternoon, colleagues, and thank you for joining us here at this press conference about the DA's Federal Congress 2020. And I'm very particularly happy that I'm joined here by the presiding officers, uh, Gregory Krambok, as well as uh, Desiree van der Waal, our two presiding officers for the Democratic Alliance Federal Congress 2020 that will take place at the end of this month, the 31st of October and the 1st of November. We are also joined here by our Chief Executive Officer of the Democratic Alliance, Mr. Simon Dickinson, and thank you for colleagues for joining us at this press conference. Well, before we start with this Congress, there's huge uh, interest in the Democratic Alliance Congress, and particularly the methodology that we are following and the platform that we are doing this Congress, given that we have still a COVID-19 uh, period. So before we start, let me uh, first uh, switch over to a video, a uh, short video about the Federal Congress, and then after I will explain the other purpose and the outline for this uh, particular press conference. Thank you, colleagues. We will now watch a short video about the Federal Congress.
thank you, colleagues, and thank you, Azola, for that video about the Federal Congress 2020. Uh, what we're going to do now, we will do the number of issues. Num firstly, we'll explain the essence of, of this uh, Congress. Secondly, I will introduce our presiding officers, also explain the nature of the virtual Congress. We will also, during this press conference, explain how voting will work, and we will take a few questions. So that's the lineup. Uh, as I've already indicated, you have seen in the video, we are joined here by the most experienced presiding officers uh, in the Democratic Alliance, seasoned uh, politicians, and very well uh, connected in terms of the processes and methodologies of running uh, Congresses. So we are very pleased and blessed uh, that my friends Greg Krambok and Desiree van der Waal are joining us here today. The uh, very nature of this Congress is the whole issue of the accessibility. Uh, this is the most accessible uh, an easy way to join the Democratic Alliance of Congress in the history. Uh, travel is also greatly reduced and many delegates uh, may participate from their home. And for those who are unable uh, to join from their home, we have created also a network of a dozen of venues across the country for delegates to attend. And at these particular venues, delegates can fully participate as they would in a Congress plenary hall, for example. They can also watch the Congress, participate in debates, speak on items and vote, etc. At these venues uh, are hybrids of two functions, uh, participation in the Congress and voting stations for the elections. Uh, we call them our hybrid venues. They serve as a hybrid of functions, each one uh, under a deputy presiding officer who reports to the Congress through the presiding officers. Now, none of these hybrid venues is to be seen as the location of the Congress, as the Congress is truly virtual and on a digital platform. Some Congress segments uh, will be filmed and will be streamed into the virtual plenary from the DA's federal head office that is based in Cape Town, but this location also is not the location of the Congress as the entire Congress is a digital affair. There will be some due processes as we go forward. All physical venues will strictly uh, comply with COVID-19 regulations and protocols. And at every uh, physical venue will also be a fully compliant voting stations and following the uh, strict compliance during the voting stations will uh, take place in terms of the DA's internal elections. The rules will be respected, also allowing for delegates to vote uh, and to be overseen by the deputy presiding officers. In terms of internal uh, democracy, we had to reinvent how large-scale elective uh, conferences take place and innovate like never before to ensure that the DA's democratic processes goes on, that our internal democracy works, and that the Congress delegates can cast their votes for their leaders that will take uh, the party forward for the next three years. This is uh, enormous hard work has been happening over the last couple of months, sleepless nights and absolute dedication and commitment from the Congress organizing committee. Uh, they have made absolutely sure that the systems are all uh, operational and our statement for intent to, for South Africa during this Congress is our message, our theme of this Congress is real hope, real change now. And real hope is the theme, is a reflection of our extensive track record in fighting for what uh, matters, for example, the rule of law, for fairness for South Africa, for the open opportunity society in South Africa, and for the commitment to keep up this fight every day for every South African while delivering the best governance uh, performance in South Africa, wherever we govern uh, across the country. So this for us is really to offer hope to South Africans, but the hope will must also be translated into real change. Uh, that's our commitment to always do everything we can to deliver on our promises, to make urgent progress where we govern and turn around every town, every city, and every province where voters elected us, and, and so building a new majority to govern South Africa. And that's our promise to rescue our country from the 
massive and clusters of corruption uh, that we have seen, especially here in front of the Zondo Commission. Well, the theme is not only real hope, real change, but also now. And the word now, for the Democratic Alliance for this Congress, represents the enormous urgency of our mission and our work as South Africa hurtles toward economic and social crisis under the current uh, failed governance. There is no more time, more important than right now, to reassert the role of the DA in fighting for a better South Africa. We see the word now as a binding contract with all South Africans. There is no more time to waste. And the DA is hard at work right now and every day across South Africa. The word now demonstrate that we certainly can not wait any longer to have a failed government in South Africa. Change must come in the union building and the urgency is demonstrated through the themes, real hope, real change now. I will now hand over uh, colleagues to the uh, presiding officers of the Federal Congress Desiree van der Waalt and Greg Karambok will now explain the role as well as the nature of the virtual Congress. I now first hand over to Desiree. Thank you, Desiree, for joining us. Thank you, Ivan. And good morning, everybody. The systems that we have created will make it easy for presiding officers to preside virtually and for delegates to participate. There will be 39 hybrid venues. Uh, with around 800 of the 2,135 delegates joining from these venues. Delegates at hybrid venues will be able to watch a live stream of the Congress and will be able to participate and speak. Delegates at home on their own devices will also be able to watch the live stream of Congress and participate by speaking. There will be one deputy presiding officer situated at each of these venues. We have had a very successful dry run last weekend where we tested our systems and we are glad to be able to report that everything has gone extremely smoothly. The systems worked like clockwork and to plan. The dry run included a percentage of Congress delegates coming online to test the system DA staff members, and many of the hybrid venues too. And the uh, systems were tested for live streaming and a perfect performance to all hybrid venues and home delegates. Virtual voting system were tested and it was again a perfect performance and a certified result achieved. Voting on resolutions and amendments, a system within the webinar with an accurate and certified outcome. Months of hard work had gone into these arrangements and now for the next nine days, it is full steam ahead. Thank you. And I now hand over to my colleague, Greg Krambok, who is the chief uh, officer for this Congress. Greg, can you unmute, please? Right, thank um, you, Greg. I'm just waiting for the screen to come on. Am I am I talking like this? That's fine. Thank you very much, Desiree, and uh, a welcome to our friends in the media. Um, part of our core business of Congress, obviously, will be the election of our DA leadership the federal leader, and in this particular case, three deputy federal chairpersons. And that will be the leadership that will take our party forward over the next three years. So I'm sure you'll be interested how we're going to do it. Um, the voting system that we will be using will be our OPA vote, vote system, which we tested at the dry run. And I'm pleased to say we didn't have one problem with anybody being able to cast a vote and for that vote to be successfully recorded. So a little bit about the OpenVote system. It is a very reputable system. It's been used internationally online for voting and it was tried and tested um, and worked very well, as I said, during our dry run process on Saturday. So the voting for leadership positions will be formally opened at 11 a.m. on Saturday and will be open for five hours. 
So no matter what problems delegates might have, there might be load shedding in their particular area, there might be a cell phone tower that goes down, there will be enough time for delegates to make alternative arrangements, and we are therefore expecting a very high percentage poll for the leadership votes. Those votes will be secured overnight, and then at 2.30 p.m. on Sunday, they will be announced officially. Um, I'm sure you'd like to know um, about some of these safeguards that are built into the OpenVote system. So the way the OpenVote system works is that every single delegate, whether they are a home delegate or whether they are a um, delegate voting at a hybrid venue, will receive an SMS, which will give them their OpenVote link, and then a further SMS, which will give them a unique code. And what this means is, is that no delegate will be allowed to vote twice or will be able to vote twice on OpenVote. The system itself has inbuilt safeguards to ensure that. So we are 100% confident that every delegate will in fact vote once and once only. And that has been a concern that's been raised. And we believe we've addressed that concern. Um, our um, colleagues in the media might want to know why we are keeping the results um, for Sunday. That's obviously to keep the vibe of Congress going and to make sure that um, we have um, a Congress that's enjoyed by everybody and where we get through all the work. So when everybody is finished voting on Saturday after that five hour period, all the votes will be backed up on a flash disk and that will be done in the presence of the candidate agents who are there to make sure that everything is above board. That will be done at our nerve center in Mill Street in Cape Town. It will be put into a sealable envelope, which will indicate whether the seal has been broken or not. And then the candidate agents will accompany our national auditor, who's been part of our dry run and part of our planning, to the safe where he will have the only key and that disc with a backup as well will be put in the safe and locked away with the auditor keeping the only set of keys with him. On the Sunday, he will then also accompany the candidate agents back to the safe where we will retrieve the flash disk, um, break the seal on the envelope and download the open vote results for leadership voting. And that's how we will secure a 100% authentic vote in the presence of every candidate's agents to make sure that it's all above board on a neutral voting system and with a neutral national auditor. All right, um, then you might want to know how the deputy presiding officers at our 39 venues will be interacting with the voting system. Every single delegate, whether they are a home delegate or a hybrid venue delegate, will receive an open vote link and an open vote unique code, as I've explained, by SMS. And they will then, if they are at home, use that code on their laptop to cast a vote for the leadership and the other leadership positions, as well as constitutional amendments and resolutions. But in the hybrid venues, the, um, the deputy presiding officers will have laptops available for all the delegates at the hybrid venues, roughly eight delegates for every laptop. And they will then guide the delegate to the laptop who will use their open vote link and their unique open vote code and cast their vote on that open vote system on that laptop. So every delegate will be voting via open vote. The home delegates will not be using um, the, uh, the hybrid venues, but they will be on constitutional amendments and resolutions via Zoom link on the Zoom link code. So you will go onto Zoom if you are a home delegate and you will cast your vote in that way. But if you are a hybrid venue delegate, then you will use a card, a, a green card indicating you support the constitutional amendment or resolution, a red card saying you are opposed or an the, the deputy presiding officers at that hybrid venue will tally those votes and uplink those results via a shared Google Drive system which will update our Google Drive document at Mill Street in Cape Town. And in that way, we'll get the results from the deputy presiding officers at the hybrid venues for the constitutional amendments and the resolutions. So it's slightly different for the constitutional amendments and resolutions. Um, home delegates will be using the Zoom link to vote on the polling function on Zoom. 
that hybrid venue delegates will be using voting cards onto a shared sheet, which obviously will also include the Zoom polling results. And that way, every four and a half minutes or nine minutes, when we take uh, the telling into account, we will get a result on a constitutional amendment or a resolution. All right, then um, I now want to hand back to Ivan Mayer, um, who will take us the next step forward. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you very much, uh, Greg, and thank you very much uh, to the colleagues. I think as you have seen through the video, my introductory remarks, as well as the comments made by our Deputy Presiding Officer, De Esri van der Waal, and our Chief uh, Presiding Officer, Greg Krambok, you have seen and listened carefully. There are five principles here at stake. The first principle is that this will be a virtual uh, conference. We will make available through uh, the whole issue of hybrid 39 hybrid venues because the Democratic Alliance, we have embraced the fourth industrial revolution. The second principle for us very important is that we will respect the COVID-19 uh, protocols because COVID-19 is still here at stake. And so we have made sure that the COVID-19 uh, protocols are in place. Uh, everywhere, particularly as it is here. The third one is what we call democratic accountability. For us, this is very important to give people an opportunity to vote for our, their leaders. The fifth uh, principle here is the principle of uh, delicate participation. We will give all the participants ample opportunity during this Congress to participate. And lastly, in, built into the architecture of this Congress is the whole issue of inclusiveness. So we want to include everybody and we have created this particular Congress around the principle of uh, inclusiveness. Uh, colleagues, uh, we, as you can hear, there's a theme, real hope, real change now. That's what we offer. That's our social contract with voters. That's the social contract with South Africa. And for us, this is the very important that we take South Africa forward particularly given the themes of this uh, Federal Congress. So that's the lineup. I want to uh, thank our colleagues and their participation. And I would very much now like to hand over uh, to, to Lisa uh, to open the floor for questions. Thank you, Lisa.